This is the Olympus Pen F, and it's a film camera that can save you money. Every roll of film that you stick in here is basically going to be turned into a two-for-one deal, where you save 50% off of every single image that you take. And the camera accomplishes this by being a half-frame camera. But the question is, are the savings that you get from using this camera combined with this camera's beautiful design and one-of-a-kind shooting experience enough to make up for the unavoidable loss in image quality that comes with exposing a smaller negative area? The Olympus Pen F is an all-mechanical, all-metal construction half-frame camera that was originally produced by Olympus from 1963 until 1966. There were later versions of the camera which added different features. The first version, which just so happens to be my favorite, has a really lovely gothic F logo on it in gold, which I think is very, very nice. Now, the camera was designed by the now legendary Japanese camera designer, Matanai, who later would also be responsible for the equally beautiful Olympus OM-1. Film today is very, very expensive, but that's more or less always been true in one way or another. So especially throughout the 1950s, half-frame cameras, which let you expose 72 frames on a 36 exposure roll, thereby cutting your film costs in half, were starting to gain a lot of popularity, especially in the Japanese market. The Pen F is the first, and as far as I can tell, only camera system that is an interchangeable lens SLR camera system. In order to fit the entire pentaprism and mirror assembly into such a sleek body, the whole setup was turned on its side, effectively in a portrait orientation instead of the usual landscape. It also has, instead of a cloth focal plane shutter, which is more common for cameras of this era, it has a rotating metal disc shutter mechanism, which sounds fantastic. I'll do that again. The shutter can hit a maximum speed of 1 500th of a second, which isn't that impressive, but it certainly is enough. The Pen F system was also released with a diverse selection of very high quality lenses, which are optically speaking a fantastic design that deliver excellent sharpness. Most of the Pen F's competitors in the half frame niche were inferior both in terms of build quality and construction and tended to be zone focus only cameras. And as far as I can tell, none of them had an interchangeable lens mount. The Pen F has a range finder style body, which is made entirely out of metal and is a very, very sturdy and compact camera that is incredibly well constructed. This camera certainly feels like it could take a beating, nothing squeaks or wobbles. It feels really, really premium in your hands. The camera also has an almost completely flat top plate. The only control function that is on the top plate itself is recessed rectangular shutter release, which does retain a thread for screw in cable releases. The entire flat design is rather unique among SLR cameras since it doesn't have the usual pump where the pentaprism assembly would be because as I mentioned the entire pentaprism mirror system is turned on its side which means that your viewfinder is of course in a vertical orientation. The viewfinder itself is very bright, it's very clear and it's also surprisingly big. The original Pen F did not feature a light meter, so your viewfinder is completely clear. There is absolutely nothing to get in the way of you creating your image and composing your frame. The only thing that I wish for the viewfinder was that it had some sort of focusing aid built in, because it doesn't. And that would just be my personal preference. Don't exactly have perfect vision, but it's absolutely still usable. The shutter control dial is rather interestingly mounted onto the front of the camera, which I find is a bit weird looking at first if you're not entirely expecting it, but as soon as you get it in hand, you find that the shutter dial actually helps grip the camera and it's intuitively placed where my fingers are anyway. The only problem that I have with it is that I have to take my eyes quite far away from the camera. So if I have it here, you can see if, I, if I'm holding the camera up to my face, if I want to see where the indicators are, normally I would just be able to sort of lift here and then adjust the shutter dial on the top. In this case, I actually have to take the camera away from my face and tilt it away or kind of look over and up in order to be able to adjust the shutter dial. That's maybe not my favorite design. The camera also has a very nice and smooth two-stroke film advance. And again, that fantastic shutter sound and a threaded tripod mount on the bottom which is kind of off to the side and really not my favorite it makes using the camera on a tripod a bit awkward the mount is not under the lens so it's kind of 
kind of weird to use. But then again, this isn't exactly the sort of camera that I would expect you to use for landscape photography or studio portraits or something like that, where using it on a tripod is that critical anyhow. The lenses for this system are all very, very high quality. Optically speaking, they're absolute masterpieces that deliver excellent sharpness and contrast, which actually helps to deal with the slight loss in image quality that comes from shooting an 18 by 24 millimeter frame instead of a 36 by 24 millimeter frame. The lens that I have, which is the 40 millimeter f1.4, however, does vignette ever so slightly in the corners. The lenses do actually have a built-in depth of field preview, which I think is pretty neat, and they're set up to use a zone system exposure measurement thing on the aperture. I'm not sure 100% what it's called. The f markers for f1.4, 2, 2, 8, and whatever, they are still there, but they're on the bottom. So up on the top, you have indicators ranging from 0 through 6. It's 6, in this case, representing 16, and then each number below that, a stop brighter up until 0, which is f1.4. That actually makes the camera quite intuitive to use for the Sunny 16 exposure system, which you're going to have to use anyway, because the camera doesn't have a built-in light meter. Uh, unless you have a way to meter externally, you're going to be using six, Sunny 16 anyhow. Using the camera to take pictures is also a fantastic experience. The camera feels well in hand, it has a decent heft to it, but it's not too heavy, and it's unbelievable just how long 72 frames lasts. I don't know how many times I thought I'd come to the end of a roll, only to realize that I have 20 or more pictures still left. It's only twice a 36 exposure roll, so it's kind of odd that it doesn't feel like shooting two rolls of film. It feels like an endless <laughs> roll of film. Later versions of the Pen F did add a light meter, which was then taken away in the final version of the Pen F, and later versions also featured a self timer. Now let's take a brief moment to talk about image quality, because that's something that was one of the first things on my mind when I was considering the Pen F as a camera to purchase. How is the image quality going to be effective? Because the smaller you make the negative, the greater your loss in image quality is going to be. Your grain is going to be multiplied and increased in both size and intensity, at least perceptively speaking, at by double, since the negative is half the size of a regular 35 millimeter negative. You're also going to experience some loss in resolution and clarity since you're going to be able to capture less detail since you're again dealing with a smaller surface area. And that is absolutely something that I noticed. If it's not something that I would consider a concern, again those lenses are very high quality and do make up some of the difference, but you are going to see a drop in image quality versus 35 millimeter. This is however still one of the most premium mechanical camera shooting experiences that you can find anywhere in the world and it's probably the best half frame camera that you can ever run across. So for my final thoughts for this camera, this is an excellent candid camera. You can just pocket and take with you anywhere. It's small enough and sturdy enough that that's easily done. And with the ability to take 72 frames on a single roll, you've got plenty of exposures. I think it also works well for street photography. The added bonus is because the negatives are slightly smaller, your depth of field is gonna be deeper inherently just because you're gonna have to stand further away from images at a given focal length, or you're gonna have to use wider focal lengths. So either way, your depth of field is gonna be expanded somewhat. So when you're zone focusing, for example, on street photography, not only do you have that extra depth of field, you also get to use all those extra frames. And this camera also literally saves you money stretching a roll of film farther than it would go with virtually any other 35 millimeter camera. In short, does this camera make up for the unavoidable loss of fidelity that comes with exposing half frame? I would say yes. The camera is wonderful to use, it's wonderful to have in hand, it's a fantastic camera to shoot and to take around with you every single day. And the lenses are excellent and offer fantastic quality and it's a really fun and unique shooting experience. If you are looking to get an Olympus Pen F, I would recommend looking out for a first First generation one, so one of the ones made between 63 and 66 with the Gothic F logo. I find that on one hand, those look the best, 
that's a personal opinion. But since you don't get a self timer, there are fewer mechanical parts that need servicing and can wear out. And since there's no light meter, there are no electronic components which can break. So you're probably gonna get a camera that is gonna last you longer. I would recommend looking out for one that comes with a 40 millimeter F1.4 lens, which is the one that I have and tested. That is a fantastic lens and offers slightly more light gathering ability than the 38 millimeter F1.8 and that I often see paired with this lens when looking at the, with this camera when looking at it on the used market. That's all that I have to say for now. Please like this video if you think I've deserved it. Subscribe if you think I've earned it and I will see you next time.